the poverty level in Lake County. Uh, we have, in using the uh, U.S. Census Bureau, we have determined it as of 2019, uh, with a population estimated at uh, 238,000, that 8.2% uh, of the people are living in poverty in Lake County. So that's approximately 19,000. The poverty level, of course, depends on the number of people in the household. Uh, for one person, it's about 12,000. For a family of four, it's about 26,500. The second analysis we did was uh, regarding the housing affordability threshold. As you know, I've, I've talked about this before. It's not a, uh, a percentage that we developed. It's been a long-standing uh, percentage that if you add the uh, property taxes, mortgage, and utilities, if those three factors equal 30% or more of your annual income, that house you're in is determined to be unaffordable. That doesn't mean that you have to move, but that means that you're going to have left uh, discretionary income to uh, spend on your needs and wants. It is projected using the, uh, the sources, the Center for Community Solutions and the U.S. Census Bureau, we've estimated by 2030 that approximately one-third of the Lake County seniors not living in assisted living homes will be priced out of their homes. They will be uh, at the 30 percent uh, housing affordability threshold percentage. And the reason I bring that up has to do with the jail. Um, I know that there's been uh, some public discussion that the jail needs to be replaced. And I'm just wondering, is there any estimate uh, how, mu how much is going to be needed to, to replace the entire jail? Is it 10 million, 100 million? Um, and then there's also been some discussion about the inside millage. And I know from my research on inside millage, uh, there's 1.1 mills left under the 10, uh, 10 mil threshold allowed by the state that, uh, that the commissioners can um, automatically just ass uh, assess the, uh, the 1.1 mills without a vote of the people. I'm asking the commissioners to seriously, seriously consider alternatives as opposed to just automatically going to the 1.1 mills because they're going to put a severe burden on the taxpayers. Uh, so, what I've also learned that uh, that the commissioners have uh, two budgets. I really didn't really understand that, but you have a an inside budget of 50 million, and then you have an outside budget of 270 million. Jeff, Jeff I can interrupt you. Yeah. Inside general fund and outside general fund. Thank you. I want to be abundantly clear to those viewing this that we do not have two sets of books. Yeah, I, I understand. Want to be abundantly clear on. That. Yeah, that, I, I never said there's two sets of it, books. It, but it, it <laughs> sounded yeah. like there are two sets yeah. of books. The ones that's inside that you get to see, and the one that's outside no, that you don't. Get no, to no, see. no, I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't implying that at all. The, with that 270, I understand that that's not really at the discretion of the uh, of the commissioners, and that money is given to the uh, there's you know the uh, the uh, non I, I guess you, you call them the nonprofits, and what I really would like to uh, see is that the nonprofits start uh, taking a haircut and start you know thinking about contributing you know. Uh, and helping paying for that jail so it doesn't come out of the hide of all of the uh, taxpayers. So that's that's the point that I'm making on that, that we've got to find some other way as opposed to the inside millage. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, well, if I could take a few of those in some order. Uh, I, I don't think we could petition Deepwood to help fund a justice center project. You know, I, as, an, as an example, well, I, I do I do know that they have fifty million dollars in cash, and un, unfortunately, many of these nonprofits have rainy day funds. And my concern is, as the the work that they do at Deepwood, no question, they do an outstanding job. I'm just saying that if we if all of these nonprofits have rainy day funds, we we're keep we're sucking the the cash out of the community. And that it goes back; it falls back on the taxpayer. So we need to be very mindful. If if anybody's got some rainy day funds, do they need fifty million dollars to operate? They do a great job, no question. But do they sure. need fifty million dollars? And that, and that's a 
question subject to fair debate. Reason, reasonable question. Uh, but it, again, just to be abundantly clear, inside general fund activities, outside general fund activities, many of the outside general fund, for example, um, let's use Crime Lab. Uh, we have our prosecutor with us, or chief uh, assistant, how's that? I'll, I'll get the right terminology here because God forbid <laughs> I say something wrong. Yeah. Uh, we, the Board of Commissioners, do not control the funding associated with the uh, crime lab. Mm -hmm. you know, our, our prosecutor, Charles Colson, does that. Uh, that's a levy that was approved by the people. I believe there are two levies. Uh, one that was approved most recently was three years ago. I'm kind of looking over to you. That, that a couple probably, of years ago, within the last few years. Yeah. 2018. So I, 2018. So there, I, I, I respect your perspective. But people, people keep passing these levies. I, I, I understand. I understand. I, I, I recognize. I was fighting that that levy, uh, you know, quite a bit. And all we can do is, you know, try to educate the people that sure. they're, they're pricing themselves out of their homes. And taking some things here, uh, the population, Lake County, poverty levels. You know, we have a fantastic job and family services. Medicaid expansion's been a I'm going to say, as it has been applied in Lake County, I'm going to speak only to the Lake County experience. I can't speak for other parts of the state. Mm. I believe it has been fairly and properly applied. I believe you're going to find that many hardworking people have benefited from that, and it, it has actually kept them in their homes. Because mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that unanticipated medical bills can be absolutely devastating. Uh, seeing wellness visits with the doctors considerably more cost effective than going to an emergency room at a thousand bucks a crack. Uh, but one of the things that you had uh, talked about the affordability index in conjunction with the uh, poverty concerns, I, I, this is one of the things and I, I know you've heard me talk about this, the underemployment issue. Mm -hmm. And that's why whenever you hear us talking about uh, economic development. We're focusing on manufacturing. We're focusing on workforce development. We're focusing on connecting our workforce with our employers. Because I'm going to be blunt, and I'll say it again, manufacturing is where real wealth is created in the community. Those dollars stay in the community. Statistically, every dollar generated stays in that community and circulates seven times. Retail is three, sometimes four. Obviously, in this pandemic, our retail has been hit hard. We've been blessed that our manufacturing base has held strong. They've made a number of adaptations. I agree 100 percent, uh, Commissioner Hammercheck, on the manufacturing. In fact, we have uh, we have tried to uh, work with Lakeland Community College, and uh, what we don't understand is that many of the um, residents in Lake County have to go to Lorraine Community College in order to get the proper education that the manufacturing environment uh, requires, which makes no sense to me, sure. but that's a topic for another day. In, indeed, indeed. But we are blessed, though, that we do have Auburn Career Center, Lakeland Community College, even Lake Erie College. Uh, just as an example, you wouldn't think of Lake Erie College, a four-year college, having a premier HVAC program, and they do. It's mm -hmm. amazing. They, they have technology over there that... Uh, it's right there with the manufacturers, uh, yes. what they do. So there's there's a lot of uh, activities that are taking place in Lake County that most folks don't even know. Mm -hmm. uh, again, but that's one of the things, getting the message out there. Well, the, another thing that disturbs me, though, is that when I, I do the research, uh, I find out in Lakeland Community College, what I'm told is that when many students that are coming from uh, Lake County high schools, they need remedial work before they're even ready to do uh, basic two-year uh, college courses. Quite frankly, that's not acceptable. I, I don't have an answer for it. I don't know why, but I can tell you that the results are they need remedial courses. So we need to, uh, I'm, I'm getting off topic here, but no, we, we need to. Again, uh, fair debate. Yeah, all right. Uh, the other one uh, you, you brought up, uh, the jail. Yes. I, I believe it's been talked about uh, freely and candidly for a number of years. We are moving away from a jail model to a justice center model. That's not just a rebranding. Uh, we have a facility that was, that, that, that building's built. Uh, legal, I just muted that just for the background noise. As long as you can hear. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Young, can you hear adequately, sir? No, he's muted. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, 
Lake County has done a, a good job, very good job, in fact, of not using uh, <laughs> all the people's money that is so readily available to uh, that inside millage, uh, which can be uh, simply acquired, no vote of the people required. So um, you know, it does sit in the reserve and um, I, for one, hope it remains in reserve. Um, and of course, I think that addresses one of your major concerns directly. <laughs> that uh, the more property taxes increase, the more difficult it is for people to, to maintain and acquire a home. So, um, I think we're, at least on a comparative level, we're, uh, we're, we're well situated. We're one of the few counties, I think, uh, I don't know what, I don't have all the data in front of me, but uh, we're definitely in a minority of counties that have not used all of those months, simply because of the ease of accessibility to uh, accessibility to government to tap into those funds. So I think that is a credit to Lake County, and I think it demonstrates the concern that uh, government in Lake County has for the citizens uh, not to increase those uh, property tax levels. Um, that's, I just wanted to mention that. So it, it isn't as if, uh, you know, this, this isn't, the concerns you're mentioning are not uh, being considered. They certainly are, and I think that that's demonstrated by the uh, sort of the hands-off approach that we've demonstrated through the through not applying those monies to our general fund. <laughs> yeah, my goal was just to get the inside knowledge. My my goal was just to get the taxpayers' viewpoint. Uh, uh, in front of the uh, commissioner, so thank you very much. Sure, but if I may, though, for your benefit yeah. and for those obviously viewing, uh, as I was starting to say, the uh, the current jail felt like a battleship. It was designed around an incarceration model. Time has proven that we are really heavily in a rehabilitation treatment. Many people who wind up at our current facility have mental health issues substance abuse issues. Our courts really work hard to keep the low-level nonviolent offenders out. Uh, they, they have a number of programs where they work with people literally to keep them out of the facility. We had years ago closed down the minimum security facility and reintegrated that population back into the current facility. But time has shown it's expensive to maintain. Uh, I'm blunt. Personnel are expensive. You're, you're looking at at least $100,000 a head by the time you're looking at wages and benefits. So every time we have to put somebody in that facility to monitor those inmates, about 100000 a head. And that's not a criticism of our corrections officers and other support staff. That's just a reality. Just the reality. I understand. In fact, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Recently, uh, I think it was within the last week, we had a corrections officer at another facility taken hostage and the hostage taker uh, lost his life because of that stunt. Uh, there are a number of similarities in configuration and operation. We are blessed that our facility is, is well maintained, which is a testament to our sheriff and previous sheriff. Uh, sheriff Liam Bruno actually came up through the system and uh, I'm sure you might recall he was actually the jail administrator. Mm -hmm. So you could not ask for somebody who would be more familiar. Captain Brooks I believe uh, she has, I believe, 30 years of service, which is un unheard of uh, when you have that level of commitment. Although the facility continues to meet state standards, it's getting long in the tooth. And I don't think anybody has invested more time than I have in looking at a refit, addition, options. And even I am at the point 
where I have to concede in order to maintain efficiency, effectiveness, and safety, we're, we're looking at a new facility, which is again why I'm saying a justice center model where we move away from the hardcore incarceration. There'll be that component, obviously. You're going to have to have that, but it doesn't have to be everything at that level. And that's yeah, where you get Yeah, Commissioner Hammercheck, I, I'm very confident in your analysis, and uh, so I, 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 I have no issues with that at all. So Fair, if, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. But again, I'm, I'm also being respectful of the yeah. media hat also. As much yeah. as I'll tease you about that, I, yeah. I have to give you the full story. And we are looking at at least $100 million. Mm -hmm. I will tell you Lake County is one of the lead counties in the state of Ohio, working with the state of Ohio to get an awareness, I'm going to just say it, in Columbus that there are many deficiencies with facilities throughout the state. Uh, the state capital budget, they approved $50 million, uh, $25 million, $25 million because of the biannual budget. $25 million a year won't do anything. Those dollars are going to facilities that, if I were to speak candidly, have been poorly maintained, not supported by their community, and some of those facilities are actually being rewarded for bad behavior. And, and that, that's disappointing when you see a professionally run facility, uh, not just our Sheriff's Department, our uh, Buildings and Grounds, Telecommunications Department, our support staff, the, the companies that support us as uh, private contractors, mm -hmm. the, the effort, the work, the efficiencies that they put into that. Uh, I believe we're anywhere from a half a million to a million dollars a year just to maintain the facility in its current state of readiness. There's a lot to be considered there. Yeah, I, I, I would say, uh, I'll, I'll just say my experience in dealing with the, uh, the administration, if everybody is um, doing the same job that people in this administration building are doing, I feel very confident that we're getting our money's worth. Thank, that's comforting to hear you say that. It, I, I will assure you we are thoroughly research, researching all sources, state, federal, uh, even uh, private foundations that might have an interest in seeing effectiveness and efficiency. But to your point regarding uh, the inside millage, I, I, and I don't think you're part of the defund the police crowd by any stretch of the no. imagination. No, I'm not. But I am aware that there is a segment of society that is using conservative values as a weapon to say that, well, don't build a building if you're true conservative. That, and, that, and that I'm, I'm finding this I don't, I don't understand the logic. well we actually yeah I, I'm having struggles with it too mm -hmm. but there is that battle of well if you uh, uh, reinstitute collection because that inside millage that's uh, that's on the already on the books it's not a new tax mm -hmm. it's already on the books it's just not being collected it's like a company having receivables and they're only collecting less than half the receivables but this is something that I don't think is generally known, and I, I believe it bears uh, being brought out. That 1.1 mil also is a legacy 1.1 mil. And what I mean by that is there is 10% and 2.5%. And I'm going to use the word rollback. To keep, it may not be the right term, but it's, it's one that most people understand. There's a reduction in the tax to the taxpayer. That 12.5% is made up by the state of Ohio. So as much as the state of Ohio has cut local government funds, that 1.1 is protected and it is supported by the state. Mm -hmm. So that, again, it's a total of 12.5%. And that, it, that seems to be being swept under the rug very conveniently. And I'm, I'm very concerned about the defund the police angle that some people are playing here. And again, I do not believe you are anywhere near that. You're probably as far from that as anybody. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> uh, and that's that, that, that's unsettling. So I, I just want to get that out as, into the discussion uh, that there's a great deal of effort being put into uh, being responsible, being effective, being efficient. And uh, I, I would rather start out uh, saying that we're, we're looking at estimates based on square footage of 100 million and come in in 70 million rather than start out at 70 million oh by the way we're up to 30 million one way you look like a rock star the other way you look like a rockhead so thank you very thank much you. thank you i appreciate your